What's up, YouTube? I'm Joe, and you're watching my channel, Ink and Iron, and I'm here with Gabe today. How's it going, everybody? And uh, Gabe and I are going to show you some new knives to our collection for 2020. We're doing kind of a roundup video, just showing you what we acquired. These aren't necessarily new models for 2020, just stuff that came into our collection this year. So uh, let's get started. All right, we've got quite a few knives on the table. Gabe, you want to start us off? Show us some of the things you got. Sure. Let's start off with a little guy. This is uh, just a little Texas toothpick case knives. This is just purely aesthetic. I've never used this knife to even open a letter. <laughs> this is just a novelty thing that I really like to have. Yeah, I like the detail on that thing. And what are those handles made of? This is malachite and mother of pearl with nickel plating on the bolsters there. Nice. Just a black resin as well. Yeah, the, the filler there is just uh, a plain black resin. Nice. Yeah, good color on that one. Uh, well, I'll get you green for green. I got uh, Victorinox Swiss Tool, or uh, was a Swiss Champ, sorry. This Big year. Guy. Big guy, bunch of tools. There's a set of pliers in here, all kinds of stuff. And I've got it on a little pocket clip. But uh, yeah, this has been super handy this year. I think it's got like 25 different implements on it. And uh, I think I've used all of them, or at least tried to. And I know this is a whole other conversation, but mm. I know you've mentioned you've been using that over Leatherman lately. Lately I have, yeah, uh, mostly because these are much easier to sanitize. Um, I have a couple of Leatherman multipliers and they're great, but uh, they do get gunked up and they are not generally made of as stainless a steel as these are. Uh, I've been using like bleach solutions, so okay. these hold up a little better for that in my experience. Good point, thank you for bringing that up. Yep, next up we have another Swiss Army knife here. This is the one that I've been carrying pretty much any time I'm carrying a, a Swiss Army knife. And nice. it's because it's just the perfect size for me. You know, like that obviously has all the perfect tools, but... <laughs> Everything you could want. Yeah, and then some. <laughs> but this just has those few things that I really find I need most frequently. So we've got your standard regular blade there. We've got the can opener, bottle opener, and screwdriver. And you could also use it as a pry piece, but I wouldn't really recommend it. And then one of the coolest features that they've added to these is this miniature screwdriver. <laughs> nice. It uses this wasted space or otherwise wasted space. And it's actually come in handy a couple times. Nice. That's another one of my favorites there. Well, I have a different kind of uh, Victorinox here. I got one of the Alox versions. This is the Pioneer X, I believe. Um, knife blade, all scissors, a couple screwdrivers, and that's about it. It's just a and all that works. Yeah, yeah, very nice all. I, I want to see this on more Victorinox tools for sure. Very compact. Been enjoying that one. So here we've got a uh, Lion Steel Traditional. This was a gift from a friend of mine. We did a knife exchange recently, and this was one of the knives that I received. <laughs> and this is my first ever Lion Steel, and I love it. It uh, comes from the factory, uh, extremely sharp. It's one of the best factory edges I've seen so far. And it's, uh, I believe, yeah, M390. So great nice. steel to have on a traditional. All right, I've got uh, from the knife exchange as well. This is a Northfield Arms. Uh, I forget what model this is. It's a three blade. And uh, all these blades are razor freaking sharp, which uh, has been really nice using it around the house because uh, you know, I don't get out that much anymore, but uh, I've been using blades around the house to make up for it. And while we're on the topic of knife exchange, 
This is another lion's teal. This is the second lion's teal that I have ever owned. <laughs> Got both of them at the knife exchange. And this one is a very unique knife. You know, one, just the shape while it's closed. Two, it's made of a solid aluminum. So this is all milled aluminum. And one of the really unique things about this one is the lock on the back. So if you rotate this, you can no longer disengage the lock. And they claim that it's got the integrity of a fixed blade. Not sure I buy it. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't <laughs> test it. But a cool feature nonetheless. Yeah, I like that knife. And speaking of knives from the exchange, I actually forgot one of mine. Um, I'm going to crop in a little video for you guys later of the uh, Wee Knives Practic. Yeah, it's a good blade. Gabe actually got it for me. Yeah. So uh, appreciate it, man. That was a good pick. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, the knife exchange was a lot of fun. I would recommend that you guys do that if you have other friends that are into knives the same way that you are. Definitely. And you can all just kind of agree on a, a price point. And, yeah, it's just a fun fun way to spend your time during the pandemic I'd say. Yeah we have in previous years gone to the Spider Coast second sale and gotten got just all kinds of blades from there yeah. but uh, with COVID this year it, it didn't happen it's all online so yeah we did the knife exchange and uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. It was a Highly great recommended. substitute yeah. yeah. Speaking of Spider Coast this one is not a seconds this is the Spider Co Little Native in Rex 45 Nice. And this knife is so underrated. I love this knife. This is one of my favorite knives to carry. And it normally comes with a wire clip on it. Actually got another native right here to show you. <laughs> so example. typically it comes with the wire clip, but Casey Lynch cannot recommend him enough. Makes amazing aftermarket clips for Spyderco, Benchmade, just a ton of different companies. Yep. Lots of different models so, take these clips. Yeah. And I'll even show one that I don't think he has listed as being compatible, but it is. I oh, guess yeah. that'd be a, a good transition right here. So this is another one of his wire clips. And this is uh, Ace Biblio Giant Mouse. And um, I forget exactly which model this is. The, but, um, is it the Iona? I'm not sure. I would have to look it up, so right. sorry, guys. We'll, we'll put it down below. We'll yeah. look it up for you guys. But uh, it's got a great micarta handle, a backspacer that I, I really like, and it's LMAX, so you get a great steel. And nice. That clip looks awesome on there, too. Yeah, the, uh, the Casey Lynch clips are second to none. It's... Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else did I get this year? I got mostly traditionals this year. Oh, I've got this from uh, Ontario Knife Company. This is their Wraith model in a fully clear translucent uh, plastic there. So you can actually see the lock mechanism at work inside the handle, which is really why I bought it. This is like a $20 knife, a little but beater knife. Yeah, it is really cool. And if you're wondering how these knives work, now you can see it in action. Skipped over this little guy. <laughs> so this is uh, a knife from Kaiser. My card of handles again. A little bit different than uh, the giant mouse I just showed. A little bit smoother. So I don't personally I don't like this micarta as much, but I love this knife. So for how blade. for how small it is, it has a great action. You know, it's, uh, it's not really a steel worth mentioning, I don't even... But the reason I got this knife is because it's called the Kaiser Lieb, L-I-E-B, which is my last name. And I would have got this knife anyways if I had handled it, but I purely got this because of the name, so... Yeah. But it happens spelled, to be a great knife. Spelled exactly the same way. Yeah. Very cool. I'm running out of stuff. Gabe did a lot better this year than I did in terms of collecting. Uh, but I actually got this in a trade uh, with my friend Jade. This is a Leatherman Kick, I believe. And it actually has like its own pocket clip. It's a nice compact little multi-tool. 
Uh, I don't think they make this model anymore. Um, has these nice like plastic inserts, make it more comfortable in your hand. And uh, yeah, nice compact little package. Came with a little slip case too, which actually inspired some uh, slip cases of my own this year. We'll uh, show you guys in a minute. So, speaking of slip cases, <laughs> Joe just gave this to me a few days ago. And in it I have a knife that's pretty special to me. This was a knife that belonged to my grandfather and my father used it for a long time as well. And Joe was kind enough to clean it up and sharpen it and it's uh, it's in really great condition now. Very sharp. To be fair, I didn't have to work that hard. It was in pretty good shape. Yeah. But uh, it really turned out beautiful. Yeah, and some of you are really going to appreciate that patina that's on there. So I'll give you a close-up. Right, you can't buy that. Yeah, and these handles are marble. So that's very uh, unique as well. But yeah, that's, uh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, it was a nice one. I made that slip case after making one for uh, this little knife. This is actually my first vintage. I was inspired to get it after uh, cleaning up Gabe's knife, actually, because I just thought it was so cool. This is a little uh, made in Boulder, Colorado knife uh, by Western Knife Company. They're no longer in existence. They are defunct, but they used to make nice little blades. And uh, I used to live in Boulder, so decided to collect this guy and Made yeah, a little we, slip case. We both live pretty close to Boulder still, so it's nice to get them some things that are local. Yeah. We're once local. <laughs> so this is uh, the first Benchmade I've ever bought. This is the Benchmade Mediator. Just a pretty basic switchblade. It's a S90V, which is what Benchmade typically puts on uh, their better, bla better blades. And this, this is an excellent knife because... It's lightweight. It's got a lock. You know, some people don't care for the lock on button push on button push switch, switch blades. Oh Jesus! <laughs> on button push switch switch blades. Say that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they don't have a flush button, I like to have a lock personally. So that knife has served me well so far, and inspired me to get another Benchmade recently. This is the Benchmade Osborne with the full carbon fiber handles. Very nice. And also S90V, I believe. Yep. This also has a aftermarket Casey Lynch clip. And it also has the, uh, the blue posts there, which uh, caught my eye. I really like that. Yeah, blue anodized uh, spacers on there. That's cool. Yeah. And then one with the purple anodized titanium. And you can't tell on video, but that knife is super lightweight. Yeah, that is one of the lightest knives on this table, actually. Yeah, that's a feather. That's maybe two ounces and change. The mediator very nice. is very lightweight, and it, the mediator feels heavy mm -hmm. compared to the Osborne. It's a giant mouse is similar. But man, carbon fiber really cuts weight. Yeah, it does. You want to talk about the mist screen a little bit? Um, probably the lightest weight knife on this table. We knives miscreant. Yeah, and those uh, holes are definitely for speed. Definitely reduces weight on this blade. These are what uh, titanium handles. Yep, titanium handles. Very nice with a like differential anodizing on the uh, milled holes there. Super cool. It weighs nothing. It's a frame lock, so they didn't bother with steel liners. And and it's a sizable knife as well. Yes. Let's uh, pull something out that everybody's familiar with Something here. to compare with. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. PM2. Something everybody knows well. Yeah. That's, so, it's definitely uh, a long knife. Yeah, a little bit longer than the PM2. Maybe not legal in most jurisdictions, but uh, man, this is a cool blade, and it flips beautifully. Really nice blade shape on there. 
Wii has been impressing me a lot. Yeah, their build quality is staggering. Yeah, I've got another Wii knife right next to it <laughs> that I would like to talk about. This is the Bob Terzuola Persian style. And it's pretty obvious why it has that name. Both the handle and the blade are very reminiscent of a Persian style knife. And this is uh, another micarta. Micarta is something I've uh, been getting into more this year. So Wii knives, micarta, and mm -hmm. traditionals are all something that has been catching my interest more and more. I don't even know where to start with this knife. <laughs> uh, where'd you get it? Well, I'm not going to promote that site. <laughs> but A site that will not be named. Yeah, this was, uh, this was a, a partnership type thing that Bob Terzuola did in designing and producing this knife with Wii and the site that we're not going to mention. Because <laughs> they dropped the ball this year? They really dropped the ball. It was bad. Even for a, a pandemic happening this year, it was very bad. But moving past that, onto the design. This has uh, a lot of brass with the brown micarta, which... You know, I, I saw this knife and I I just had to had to get it. Yeah, it's a nice look. The uh, the aesthetics of it are, are really nice, and it's a uh, S thirty V, I believe. It's very small text. S thirty five V N. Okay. And this is a very smooth action. This uh, rides on ball bearings. I'm a sucker for ball bearings because it just makes the action so smooth. And this one is uh, definitely drop shut when you're holding the liner lock there. Yeah, bit of a finger guillotine if you're not uh, paying attention. Yeah, very smooth. A ball bearing pivot really is used to good effect here. Oop, slipping on it. Feels nice in the hand too. Yeah, I like the handle shape there. It's a nice wide handle. And I love the swept back blade on the uh, Persian style. Yeah. It's a very cool look. A lot of belly. If you like slicing belly knives, this is uh, perfect. That's a good one, yeah. And from the same site, I got this one around the same time. <laughs> they may deduce the site from this particular you, blade. You <laughs> might be able to figure out where I got the knives from after I show you this one because they felt the need to print it in large text on the blade. But uh, this is a Riyadh, or Riyadi, I still don't know the proper way to say it. Pronunciation and, uh, is up to you. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Eric Ox designed Orca. And I believe it got the name because of the shape. Kind of has a bit of a whale shape to it. So this is the Orca. And this is another one with quite a bit of brass on it. Brass liners, brass hardware, brass pivot. And this is uh, one of my favorites. I have been so happy with this knife. And in just every way, really. I mean, the action is uh, absolutely drop shot. Yeah, and it's incredible. So, so smooth. The one and only thing is it's a bit of a strong detent. So you just have to give it a little extra. But as it's been breaking in, it's been getting better and better in that regard. And the steel is RWL34, which is an excellent, excellent steel. I forgot to talk about the uh, oh, yeah. lanyard beads. Let's get a little close-up of that. So, yeah, that little guy is uh, it's a custom-made bead that I got on Etsy, and it had to get sent from Russia. So that took a long time. <laughs> but yep, shipping. It was well worth it. And I think he's made of copper, brass and nickel and the detail on that bead is really astonishing yeah i don't know if my front camera is going to do it as much justice as it deserves 
Love that knife. Love that bead. Yeah. It's amazing action on this thing. Yeah, it's just, one of those knives yeah. that you can play with for a really long time and just not get tired of it. Buttery smooth. Yeah. All right. And last, not even sure I got this this year. If I got it this year, it was very early in the year. This is the Kaiser Nomad with the flamed titanium handles. And going back, I might just get the, I might have gotten the plain titanium handles, mm. just for the sake of being able to, you know, customize it myself. Right. But again, one of my favorite knives right here. This is one of the knives that really convinced me ball bearings can make a huge difference mm -hmm. in how your knife opens and closes. So ball bearings, it's not all good, obviously. You know, it's harder to keep clean than just, you know, the uh, the copper washers or you know, whatever, washers, you know, whatever Teflon. You, Teflon, whatever you have in there. Yeah. So it is a little bit more difficult to keep clean and functioning properly in that regard. But I don't use my ball bearing action knives for hard use, personally. I have plenty of other knives to do that. <laughs> so these are just uh, a bit more of a casual carry for me personally. And it's something I can really just enjoy flipping and something that I can hand to another knife person and they will really appreciate it. Yeah, the the action on this thing is absolutely unbeatable. It has that same kind of Persian styling. Yeah, very similar to the Bob Tuzerola. Just like hydraulic action is how I would describe it. I've heard someone say it before. Yeah, that's the perfect description. Yeah, it is very, very nice. And that flame titanium is a pretty cool detail. Yeah, I do like it. It's just you can do some really cool anodization things yourself. True. Which you have done, and uh, our friend Cody has done. Uh, yeah. He's made some interesting ones. Yeah, we, uh, we might have to do a video just showcasing some of our anodized stuff. Is that all your knives? Did we make Did you it? you want to showcase that little guy? Oh yeah. One quick thing at the end. Here's a Leatherman. Uh, geez, I'm forgetting the model name. The style CS. Good thing it's printed on there. These are scissors-based multi-tool, and uh, it's not bad. Bottle opener, carabiner clip. Uh, yeah, a couple of tools. Not bad, and the knife is very very sharp. So that's coming handy. Oh, and then very last, because it might f screw up the audio, uh, this was a gift to me this year as well. Chikov in uh, this special, like, warrior pattern. It's very cool. It's got a bright red clip on there as well. Yeah, Shout that's out a to really Sid. cool one. I like Thank that you. One. I like that one. Yeah, that one was nice. Alright, I forgot my uh, little keychain with my uh, my flashlight and oh. mini Leatherman and Spyderco bug and all that stuff. But Yeah, we'll have to do a keychain video sometime we'll, or yeah, something. Yeah, we'll do that at some point. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I've been Joe, and this has been Gabe. You guys have been watching Ink and Iron. And uh, look out for more of these videos, because we're going to do a couple more categories while we have our knife collections assembled and all in one spot, ready for filming. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yep, see you guys next time.